What's he gonna do? Right there. Right there. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment down below and I just might end up responding. I hate you, you hate me. Let's get together and make a petition to cancel WWE within Saudi Arabia. Seriously, why the hell is the entire roster still there the day of the recording this? I, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm topping that. I'm D. Wicker from Watch WWE, and here are the 10 wrestlers who hate themselves. No, god damn it. I'm D. Wicker from Watch WWE, and here's 10 wrestlers who hate each other in real life. Number 10, Paige and Lana. I I'm not too sure where this one stems from, but social media interactions as well as Total Diva episodes have shown that these two are a little bit less than excited when they run into each other backstage. While Twitter is constantly used to further feuds, these two have never really had any sort of program or plan on proper raw or SmackDown television before, so them going for each other in such vicious fashion really doesn't make that much sense in kayfabe. The two have gone at each other multiple times over the years on Twitter especially, and I, I guess it sort of makes sense. Paige is the total anti-diva and Lana is sort of a good representation of yester decades women's wrestling, so maybe Paige just isn't too happy seeing a model inside of the ring that she misses so dearly. Everyone was like, I'm not leaving. No, you are a brat, Lana. You weren't polite, you weren't nice, you are being a douchebag. And that's what pissed me off. If not, it would have been nice to you back. Number nine, AJ Lee and the Bella Twins. Well, the last entry was suspicion. This is confirmation because this was a textbook example of divas versus women's wrestling. AJ Lee shot up into the business from the original NXT game show concept and was almost immediately a star. She quickly inserted herself into a relationship with Daniel Bryan and eventually CM Punk. And while it did have a sort of divas era wrestling writing all over it, AJ was such a captivating performer and so good inside of the ring that she felt like a true breath of fresh air. And we can thank the Bellas for stinking up that air as they'd be to the Divas era what John Cena was to the PG era, an unfortunate emblem of everything wrong. You wanna know what I see when I look in that ring? A bunch of cheap, expendable, useless women. Number eight, Simon Gotch and Enzo Amore. Pardon me, Enzo, wherever you may be, but how are you doing? Anyone watching our videos has probably watched a couple other wrestling videos in their time, and if that's the case, there is seriously a 90% chance you have been recommended a video by YouTube in which Simon Gotch buries Enzo Amore. I think that's even the title. I don't get it. YouTube algorithms are really weird. They will randomly leech onto a specific video and shoot it into the stratosphere. Everyone's recommendations gets it, and for some reason, it still persists to this day. I still see this like every other week. Gotch basically went in on Amore for his total lack of experience inside the ring, inability to understand basic pro wrestling concepts, and general this as a person. Enzo eventually responded, welcoming Gotch for making him more relevant than he's ever been in his entire life. So, I mean, they both sort of got points there. You guys want to know something about Simon Gotch? He's got a pair of teeth like a 65-year-old woman. A don't. At this point in the room, huge pop. Number seven, CM Punk and the Ryback. I mean, uh, just look at Ryback, would you want to work with him? I sure as hell wouldn't, even in 2019 when I'm sure the dude is crisped up a lot in the ring. I still wouldn't go near the meat mass, so it really doesn't surprise me to hear how rough he was inside of the squared circle seven years ago. Nearly to the day, CM Punk was feuding with Ryback over the WWE Championship, and this was reportedly of the biggest issues Punk had with the company, despite working this program and insisting he never wanted to work with Ryback again due to back injuries he received from the feud, WWE decided, eh, who cares about Punk's opinion and paired him up a year later, driving Punk up the damn wall. Number six, the roster and Vince McMahon. The, t the intro might have alluded to this one a bit. This might just be a guess, but especially after that whole Saudi Arabian nonsense that just took place post-Crown Jewel, I'm gonna say it's a pretty damn solid guess. 
If you didn't hear after Crown Jewel on Thursday, the roster all packed their bags and hopped on the plane home before immediately finding out that their trip was being delayed. As of when I wrote this, and now as I'm recording this, the day following Crown Jewel, SmackDown is happening as we speak. The wrestlers are still stuck in Saudi Arabia. You know, that country where the rulers beheaded a journalist for being in the opposition? Yeah, they're stuck there. I know WWE and Saudi have a nice little deal going on, so probably nothing bad's gonna happen, but once you realize that Vince made it out on his private jet before anyone and left his entire roster in that hellhole of a country in the same year that those Ashley Massaro controversies leaked, I mean, Jesus Christ, I would walk out of the company tomorrow. What's good in the hood? Just holding it down, trying to take care of business. Keep it up. Number five, Roman Reigns and Enzo Amore. More hate for Enzo, and it's, well, it's definitely deserved. Seeing as how we know the real life Roman Reigns to be a fantastic individual, and all the stories lining up just too well with gotchas for Enzo to not be in continuous wrong. Roman had a few altercations with Enzo during his time in WWE. Supposedly, Roman was the man who found out first about Enzo bringing unauthorized personnel to backstage events, but that's just rumors. What we do know about is the time Enzo was fluffing around on a bus and annoyed everyone so badly that Roman actually threw the little hole off the trip and made him find his own way home. That is awesome. I don't care if he denies it. It happened, and that's awesome. Tell me what actually went down. Were you or were you not kicked off a bus on a European tour? How could you kick somebody off of a bus? Number four, The Rock and Shawn Michaels. We've discussed this one recently about how Dwayne and Shawnee never ended up having any dream match feuds during their time in the ring around the Attitude Era. Now, sure, even according to Michaels himself, their timing never matched up too great. Rocky was on the rise just as Michaels got injured, and then Rocky was going Hollywood just as HBK was returning. But what Michaels doesn't mention in interviews is the fact that there's a little bit more to the story, as supposedly Shawn and Triple H tried killing The Rock's push behind the scenes way back in 1996, as well as disrespecting his grandmother at some point along the way. I see his point on the timing, but if you haven't noticed, WWE's pretty keen on old names for drawing ratings these days. Hogan, Austin, Flair, Rock, Michaels, they're all seen coming back what feels like weekly by this point, but in all the years, we've seen a lot of those names combined with others. And I don't think I've ever seen The Rock and Shawn Michaels. Isn't it a little bit suspicious that even by 2019, these two legends haven't even done a single segment together. Oh, this is it, this is it. To be the man, woo, you gotta beat. No, wait, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. Number three, Seth Rollins and John Moxley. All right, don't take the title too seriously. I really doubt that these two hate each other. Damn, they definitely are not on the same page anymore. Rollins' recent Twitter escapades have been pretty widely covered, and in my opinion, the absolute most egregious thing that he has said has been calling out Jon Moxley for whining, not trying hard enough to put his two cents in, and how him leaving is just Jon trying to take food off of Seth's table. Everything that I just said is so goddamn wrong. For so many reasons, I would have a heart attack just trying to convey my disappointment in my former favorite roster member. But in short, Seth is just very not correct about what he's saying and remains very incredibly unabashed on social media whenever the subject comes up. Moxley, thank God, hasn't really spoken about it, which really is great. I don't need this becoming a proper Twitter spat, but regardless, what the f*** is going on? Number two, Edge and Matt Hardy. Matt is dating Lita. Edge porks Lita. Edge is now dating Lita. That's basically the gist of the story, and an entire 14 years later, there is still no word about the two having ever made up or set the past behind them. I doubt the heat of the grudge is still all there, but man, it's sad knowing that two of the best parts of the classic TLC inventors will probably always be at somewhat of odds. I took your woman. You lost your job. Granted, you came back with all these grand plans for revenge. And number one, Mr. Christopher Jerickster and Goldberg. What was that? There's been a lot of infamous backstage fights. Booker T taking down Batista, Bret Hart punching out Vince McMahon, but Jericho is the ultimate hero when it comes to the big fights backstage, having confronted and supposedly won out against both Brock Lesnar 
and Bill Goldberg. Issues with the latter stem all the way back to the WCW days where Chris Jericho was the ever underutilized but far superior in-ring cruiserweight and Goldberg was the seemingly overpushed, good at spearing and not much else big dude. Over the years it seems issues didn't subside too much as once Jericho and Goldberg both found themselves within the WWE by 2003, they were going at it backstage. Oh, and I really doubt Goldberg's taking that universal title away from the Jericho versus Owens at WrestleMania match helped from fanning the flames. Jericho and I know some 10 wrestlers who don't like each other in real life. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and notifications. Like that bell.